Hello and welcome to my channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Olamide and my channel is typically um, dedicated to a lot of things that have to do about like beauty and reviews on products that are marketed to black women um, and just kind of giving first looks at some things that people from my complexion or maybe a couple shades lighter or darker might be interested in before they mess their mind. That's a part of my channel. I think if you're a subscriber, you probably know me as such. But today's video is gonna be something a little different. I talk to my friends all the time about just like thoughts, like just things, not with the GH. I wanted to kind of bring some some topics to you guys that might be a little bit more lifestyle-y, a little bit less um, strictly focused on makeup. I can give you the rundown of what's on my face right now if you want. I'll just put that in the description box below. Um, but today's video will be focused more on a topic more than anything. But first and foremost, if you like the video, press like. If you don't like the video, press the thumbs down twice. And uh, if you really, really, really like the video, go ahead and click subscribe uh, so that we can keep these conversations going. But today's topic of discussion is the three reasons why women should not get married in 2019. Now, if you if you think I am saying this because I'm like salty for some reason, I am betrothed. <laughs> Yeah, I am married. I've been married for what's coming up on two years now. It's going to be our second anniversary in July. And I just have a lot of, I've had a lot of interesting conversations since I've like gone over to the married side. It makes me really feel for my single sisters out there who um, might be victim to these common misconceptions. I will completely address, I am talking about a heterosexual, heteronormative relationship and relationship dynamics. I'm speaking to that because that's my experience. And if this does translate to non-heteronormative relationships, then all the better. I think that someone can probably reflect off of these sort of um, topics, regardless of gender and regardless of the dynamic of their relationship but I am speaking specifically to that sort of experience. Also, I, I, I think that this might apply more to Christian women because a lot of these conversations have happened with women who I've met in church or known through church or done life with together um, and who follow Christ. And so it might be something that, that Christian women or women in church deal with a little bit more than women who aren't in church. But honestly, like you tell me in the comment section down below. But let's just jump in. So I think there are three indicators that a woman in 2019 is not ready to get married. Misconception number one that shows that you should not get married this year is if you think there's one population of guys and then there's another population of husbands. I was really confused at first by single women because I was like, why does everyone think that like my life is awesome just because I'm married? Like people who met me, most mostly people who met me married, not so much people who know me through the whole time. Actually, not even some friends who know me, know me since I was single. It's like my life all of a sudden became awesome because I'm married. But at the same time, they'll tell me like stories of the guys that they date and the, the little quirks and things that they've done that have plagued them or a characteristic or a character flaw rather that like was the, the dropping point where they're like, I can't, I'm not going to do this. And then they look to me as though I found like the golden ticket or if like I just happened upon the rarest Pokemon out there. And there seems to be this misconception that there's like, one breed of man that is just like all the men you've dated and then there's another breed of man there's another pool of men that are husbands and you're on a mission to go and like find your husband like you're Dora the exploring in order to find this husband and you have um your tinder map okay you got your your boots that you talk to at brunch about all the guys you date and you're looking to catch this husband that you've heard in folklore and that is not the case Y'all, I am so sorry if you were banking on that. <laughs> Cause imagine every guy you've dated and the ones who you've like pushed away or dropped or 
who have also pushed you away or dropped you or whatever. Just imagine every guy you've dated and everything about them that you loved and that you hated and take that and have him move in with you and be in a covenant relationship and have to make all of your decisions together and work through these character flaws and both you and him and, 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 and that's a husband. A husband is not a husband until they're married. A husband is just a guy and he's just probably any guy you've dated USA or any guy you've dated global, <laughs> a matter of fact. And then he becomes a husband the same way that you are not a wife right now. You become someone's wife when you are married and you can have a whole imaginary uh, dynamic in life based around becoming this wife person. But until you're actually in it, you don't really realize that you just stay exactly the same. You just now have someone to call you out on your bull all the time. <laughs> but also it's, it's a healthier perspective to go in knowing that you are going to be with a man that's just like every other guy that you've dated. He's not going to come in perfect. He's not going to come in flawless. Um, and neither are you. Neither of you should have that expectation set on you. And if you do, then you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on your partner that doesn't need to be there because now they're being, you're, you're sort of punishing them because now what women can tend to do is punish someone when they don't fulfill a role that they're supposed to. And you want to come in having very sober understanding and, and awareness of the the ways that you both are extremely synergistic and the ways that you all that y'all are opposites and strategies as to how to work around them and work through these things while you're dating. That when you're married, you already have experience in working out tough conversations. That's pretty much what it is, is if you're waiting on the elder wand of men to come across you, then they, he might be your elder wand and, and you, there might be something in you where you're like, that's the one, but don't think it's going to be perfect. Like don't leave because it gets hard because relationships and living in this close proximity to a man is hard, which brings me to my second point. If you're encouraged to get married because you think life is going to be easier. I'm so so I'm just so I just feel I feel like an a-hole kind of right now because I feel like I'm just bursting so many bubbles but you gotta get out of here with that you can't get married in 2019 if you feel if you believe if you're encouraged to get married because you think your life is going to get easier things get more complicated you have to compromise probably more than you've ever had to before. Um, and you're going to be tired. I've had so many friends of mine who, um, they just kind of assume that like, I live in this like fairy tale life, literally just because I'm married and that my life is somehow easier or less exhausting just because I'm married. And my question usually back to them is, have you ever had to spend an extended period of time in such close proximity to a man? What do you mean? Do men make you tired ever? Because now you're living with one. <laughs> I'm so tired. But seriously, um, we're all subject and um, to some extent products of the way that we have been socialized and conditioned to think. And there is a very strong way that women have been socialized and and conditions to think and we have to actively work to make sure that we're not letting our conditioning or our socialization decide who we are and decide our destinies and men have to do the very same thing so you're going to find yourself pretty consistently in difficult conversations in moments where like you don't think what you said needs an explanation or you kind of wish that you could have your mind read that's probably not gonna happen you're gonna be tired like living with another living with a roommate is tired now imagine that roommate also being a deciding factor in your finances a deciding factor in your career a deciding factor in just every life decision that you want to make that roommate is a decide they also have decision making ability because you're in this together that is something that will drain you especially if you came into it believing that now things are supposed to get easy and you're going if you think that things are supposed to get easy then you're setting yourself up for a really really difficult first couple of years because the first couple of years are the hardest by far they just are 
But in that same vein of like, when I get married, things are just going to get so much easier. Um, there also tends to be this, like when I get married, like I'm not going to be insecure anymore, or I'm going to be super confident when I get married, I'm going to feel beautiful and sexy and attractive all the time. Cause there's just one person that wants me all the time and no other person will ever take away your insecurities. That is a work that only we can undo in ourselves. And I hear so often um, women who are waiting for a part of them to be healed when they're in a relationship with a man or when they get married. With what I believe, that healing happens between you and God always and only. And ideally, he's going through healing and, and that healing is happening between him and God. And you two come together not to try to force each other to, to make each other feel good all the time, but you know who you are. You feel secure. You feel secure in who you are and your identity. And you can now strengthen each other from there. Sometimes the, the unhealthiest relationships just start from something as tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny as a little insecurity on one side or the other. And that's not to say that per only perfect people should get married or only people without insecurity should get married. But I think being aware of them and working to undo them and making them your responsibility and a responsibility that you share with, with God or with whatever you believe in is the way to go about it. That's a, that's a higher level thing that um, is going to, is going to need a heart change and a perspective change. It's within no one else's power to make you love yourself. You really do need to love yourself if you're going into this relationship because what could happen is you start to punish the other person because you still don't feel better, even though they're in your life. And, and if you were going in and thinking that they would do that, that's just unfair. You wouldn't want them to do that to you. You can't expect that they're going to be cool with you doing that to them. Um, and so that's one perspective that you should definitely undo if you want to get married in 2019. Now, the final um, misconception that would indicate that you might not be getting, you might not be ready to get married in 2019 is if you believe that this guy, not this guy, sorry, that this elder wand of men is going to walk into your life out of the blue and just sweep you off your feet and you're going to know. And honestly, a lot of guys can make really terrible first impressions. Maybe even like second impressions. If you're going to write someone off because he didn't fulfill the the like fairy tale movie television driven drama that you have in your head as to how it needs to happen or how it's supposed to happen so that you feel special, then it's not just that thinking that is going to set you up for disappointment. It's also an indicator that you kind of have to shift your perspective of a relationship and understand that it's not just a one-sided me always getting my cup filled and what I need because that's how you end up in a relationship that can be really selfish and really toxic for one end or the other, but more so how can we fill each other's cups? It's not me trying to take, 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 take and get everything I can from this man. And when I get this man, I'm going to have everything that I want and he's going to give it to me because he also has needs. He also has a work day that was on, on, on top of mind before the time that you guys passed cross paths or he couldn't get to his barber and so his hairline was a little bit messed up because his barber was booked before you met him like first impressions are not always everything and as a human you know that first impressions do are meaningful but you can't compromise everything that's going on in your world just to make a good first impression on someone because if anything you could be presenting them with a fake version of yourself and we've all met enough people who are presenting the fakest versions of themselves. We've also been the people who are presenting a fake version of themselves. And so it really takes getting to know someone over time. And I'm going to emphasize time because you need time. I, I commend and, and love a whole all the stories that I hear when someone new after three months or six months or nine months. But also, don't beat yourself up if, you, if you've been with this someone for two years or been with this person for two years and you're still not really sure um, because what that could mean is a you just aren't ready to get married not that this person is the wrong person but that you yourself don't feel like you are in a place to give yourself in that way and that's totally fine too and it's totally fine to be honest and transparent with that with your partner and not rush because you feel the pressure of 
social media or your Nigerian auntie or your Nigerian uncle or your Nigerian mom or your Nigerian dad or your Nigerian cousin. Um, I'm just speaking from my experience, but I'm sure other um, more people can relate to that. I guess that kind of brings me to the end of my spiel. That I know that this is probably going to be something that raises some comments in the comment section. So honestly, go for it. Let's continue the conversation. Let's continue the discussion. And if you have any questions that maybe you want me to answer in another video or any topics that you think would be cool to, to talk about in another video, I'd be happy to answer them too. Um, but thanks for sticking with me this whole thing you guys are super duper awesome and i super encourage marriage marriage is great go get married go get married too but also like enjoy being single Blah. enjoy it indulge in it be in it don't be looking for ways to get out of it so hard um your life is good i love you guys and keep spreading love and positivity wherever you go all right guys thanks so much for watching bye